guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical. We got posts, and today we're gonna talk a little bit about some tips and tricks on how to do fence posts that last longer and are cost effective. And we've got some wood siding, okay? I'm gonna talk about a couple different options as well of how to do wood siding that lasts and is cost effective. You guys have seen the wood siding we've got going on next to the container home build. But first, let's talk about the posts. All right, now the posts themselves, these are actually Caribbean pine, which most people have a hard time getting Caribbean pine. It's, uh, it's about twice as durable and rot resistant as what you see now at like Home Depot or something like that, or what they sell as posts in raw form or even from a sawmill. But the reason for that is because it's just basically old growth. It is a different species, but we had for a long time, we had um, Caribbean pine in Florida, in South Florida. So if you are going out in the glades and cutting pine, you can still get some good pine. But these, the pine that you find in Home Depot or hardware stores or lumber yards is from tree farms. And what happens is the cells of the wood, they just, it, they grow so quickly and then the trees have no real resistance to the wind or anything like that. It's kind of a metaphor for life. Anytime that we have difficulties in life, it forms us into stronger people. Wood's the same way, wood that grows in has a few, you know, very dry, uh, very tough summers or winters. That wood builds force anytime it's got high wind resistance, you know, it's got a fight against wind, it, it, it generates a stronger wood. So that being said, a uh, choice of wood obviously is everything to begin with. I would say that this is almost like a, like a Douglas fir, which was used in the United States for so many years to create fence posts. Um, but Caribbean pine, it's not quite as, as rot resistant, obviously, but it's, uh, it's probably twice as rot resistant as what you get off a tree farm. So just bear that in mind. But from there, what you want to look at is you have to treat the wood so that it lasts longer. Okay. What they do to treat telephone poles, for example, is they put the wood in a vacuum chamber and they use whatever mix of chemicals and then hit that vacuum and, and the wood naturally sucks all the material into it. If you don't have a vacuum chamber, what we did with some of these is we dug a big hole, created like a swimming pool, topped it off with plastic, stuff like that, and used burnt motor oil, kerosene, and kerosene or diesel. You can use kerosene or diesel. The, the kerosene or diesel, what it does is, is allows the, it, it infiltrates the wood better. And then the burnt motor oil, although it, it is technically, can be an environmental hazard. So you gotta be very careful with, what you wanna do is really top off the area well, so it's not leaching into the earth. Then you wanna, when you're done with the hole or the swimming pool uh, curing area, then you wanna throw in some sand. The sand will soak in the diesel. Then you pull out the sand and properly dispose of the sand so it doesn't, uh, again, leach into the earth and cause uh, you know toxic buildup. But that uh, burnt motor oil is a great way to cure wood. There is also the shugi suban, which is um, a Japanese, just basically just means burning the wood. You can burn the outside of the wood. You can do a combination of the both. You can use almost any oil, right? So we've got, what we've got uh, here is oil. And then finally you can use modern wood sealers and treatments. So I'll talk about them a little in a little while, but the modern wood sealers are gonna obviously be quite, quite a bit more expensive. Now putting the posts in the ground, all right, you, you wanna, I, I like to put a hole that's about three and a half feet deep, okay? So you can see this hole here is, this one's probably almost four feet deep. And then what I'll do from here is I'll either put a big rock in the bottom, like you can see in the background there, we've got some real big rocks. Or if you don't have a big rock like that, or if you have access to gravel on your property, here's some gravel that I've pulled off of my property and I'll just put this gravel down in there, okay? So I'll do about six inches of gravel in the bottom, all right? And really any kind of gravel is fine. This gravel, like I said, I just pulled off the property. If you wanna spend money, you can use the type gravel that you can get from places that sell gravel. 
And uh, this is some gravel that it's more similar to what the people use to sell that sell gravel. Okay, this is what we use in our concrete mix. But you know, the reason that you want to do that is because po wooden posts ruin because of the humidity, constant humidity and the wetness of the dirt. So it depends on what kind of soil you have in your area. But what I do is I put about six inches of gravel in the bottom. Then I put the post on top of that and then another at least six inches of gravel. So when it, when the ground is wet, that water, that humid wet earth is not on top of basically, or in contact with the wood. And it allows that at the bottom, it allows the wet with the water, it allows the water to drain and it just lets the post last a lot longer. So that's a, that's a little trick for fence posts that'll last a long time. You guys can see we are fencing in this area here and that's kind of how we're gonna do it. We're also gonna do some work with stones. Again, these trees are all trees that were left behind by the logging companies when they came through and, and cleared all the woods from this property. I got the property at a pretty good deal because the people who owned it um, just absolutely devastated the forests here and sold off millions of dollars worth of hardwood and like I said, the Caribbean pine. And I was able to just come through here and find fallen uh, leftovers of this wood that just, that was a, enough wood to, that we're using for this entire project. They, they were very selective with the wood. Anything that had a bend in it, you can see these posts over here. A lot of them have bends and crooks and, and a, none of these, because of, the, because of the way that they bend and none of them are exactly straight and none of them are thick enough to where they were considered and they were, a lot of them are very knotty. None of them were considered to be usable to sell for actual boards and wood by the logging company. So we're reutilizing all that wood here. Obviously it's a lot of man hours, a lot of work doing all that, but worth the while in my opinion. Now let's take a look at some wood and how, what we've done to tap, top off these. And then this actually is just chainsaw cut from the same fallen wood and and uh, in some cases, we've had to purchase some, some wood from the sawmill occasionally, but the majority of it we were able to harvest from, again, like I said, from fallen parts and fallen trees in this area. So you'll see a lot of it has, uh, you know, corners and tips that are, you know, bent or big knots and stuff like that. But we cut it pretty thick so it would last a while. And then we, with this one, just because of the, I wanted to do the, like I said, shugi suban, which is the burning technique, but it just didn't have time. We've been so busy, so far behind on products for Bone Tactical that I've, I had to just do a couple paint uh, with, a, with a paint roller, just roll on some of that formula that I was talking about with the uh, kerosene and burnt motor oil and just stuck them up there. Well, I'm gonna have to go back through at some point in the future once they really, uh, once that oil starts to dry out and the sun starts to bake it a little bit, I'm gonna have to go back with uh, some sort of a torch and then just burn the outsides there because what I really wanna protect against is the wind, water, UV, you know, basically water and UV damage. The insides will be fine with that oil paint and then it'll already last a lot longer with the oil that I put on there. But the, uh, the, in the future when it really starts to dry and, and, and the sun is having its effects, I'll just hit it with a torch, burn it, put the outside black and crispy, maybe hit it with a little bit more oil, but wire brush and oil, and then it'll last a hundred years. So let's check out the inside of what these little areas look like and talk a little bit more about how we made an economical way to top off the, my dream shop build uh, with some wood that we were able to come across. Very sturdy, very heavy duty wood. This is uh, anywhere between an inch and a half and two inches thick here. Uh, like I said, rough cut timber. We did the framing, you guys probably saw, well, you did in the last video, you guys saw how I did the, the framing. The joists built also custom. Everything here I've built from, you know, materials that I was able to locally source. A lot of it I was able to get from junkyards and find used. Some of it, uh, obviously I had to buy new. But the idea here is to have an area that's protected from the sun, an area that is breathable okay so air can and breeze can come through so it doesn't get too hot here in the shop but the water and the sun will not come through so there's a there's a gap in here to where you know the outside can be uh, accessed but the 
you know, UV will not pass through here. So we have an area here, a storage area where I can store stuff on top of here and it'll be protected from the elements. And, you know, obviously thousands of pounds of stuff. I'm planning on storing wood here as well. Uh, all of the, the fallen hardwoods, granadillo, mahogany, uh, Honduran rosewood, cedar. I have a bunch of wood from trees that I found out in the jungles and, and especially after the hurricane found a bunch of wood. So we're going to cut that into blocks that fit perfectly here and then just stack it all up here and also put the uh, uh, these posts right here are stainless steel and I'm actually I've got them here because I'm going to put a ring on top of here and then actually be able to put a strap over the top where I can where I can strap the wood down and um, and actually have uh, basically when you when you're drying wood you want it to be distributed evenly with space in between so the air can pass through and then you want pressure from the top. So instead of having to put weights or something, I can just put straps and the wood won't bend or warp if one part of it dries faster than the other. So it's just a, a really good way to uh, really do high quality work drying the wood. So when you guys buy a wood product from Bone Tactical, you know that it's um, responsibly, sustainably sourced, re recycled wood, and it's uh, very professionally done. You know, we, we don't use uh, green woods or woods with water in them because then you know, the customer will actually have warping and stuff like that in the, at the end. Uh, so we, we do our best to, pre to prevent that. Of course, if, uh, if you live in a very humid area, the, the wood can take on water and swell a little bit. And that's just something that's kind of impossible. We do use sealers, but that's just something that's kind of impossible to avoid. Anyway, uh, this is the wood that we've got going on here. This is how we've decided to do the system here. The other option, for this wood would be putting on a sealer like we did next to the container home at the floor level. And the reason, which you see my hands didn't even really take on any, any oil from touching this, it's already drying out pretty good. But one reason we might want to do a sealer is for the, uh, you know, um, for the reason that, first of all, sealing the wood a little bit better, the pores of the wood. And then the other thing is aesthetics and also, so maybe something's not rubbing off onto my hands or something like that. But sealer is going to be much more expensive, and uh, there are a lot of good sealers out there. I do recommend a polyurethane sealer. So polyurethanes are the best that I've found. But again, uh, bang for your buck. Really can't go wrong with kerosene and burnt motor oil. Thanks for watching. Hope you love this series of building my dream shop. Let me know what you want to see next. Bone out.